Hi, this is Min Yao from Singularity Engineering. This is a continuation of our room ventilation simulation. In this video, we'll look at how do we set up a ventilation simulation to calculate the age of air inside of a room. So that's all we need to do. We have a model. Send that model over to the setup part, and now we can go, run, go ahead and run an analysis of this room. You can see the model we have here. Um, in the corners, we have some smaller elements on these thin uh, tables and fairly large element on these flat surfaces over here. So it's mostly the tables, I think, that draw out the mesh count. Um, this is a simu the CFD simulation environment. We're going to use air at 25 degrees. In this case, we're just going to do a flow analysis, not including buoyancy. I'll do that next. Um, fluid model, isothermal, K-epsilon, uh, turbulence model, we can change this to SST, it's usually uh, a preferred turbulence method. And then we can set up some, some flow rates. So uh, oftentimes the, the, the flow rates in ventilation is specified in CFMs, cubic feet per minute. So let's uh, supply call it supply flow rate. So usually I create expressions for this. So supply flow rate, we have two vents here. It's a thousand square feet, um, 10,000 cubic feet about uh, room. And if we want a, 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 a ACH of let's say six or seven, we can do, let's see, 10,000 cubic feet divided by six divided by 60. Um, okay, so the room is about 10,000 square feet. Um, if we want an ACH of, let's say, 6, we need to change out the whole room every 10 minutes or so. So then 10,000 square feet right, divided by 10 minutes. So every minute we need to pump in about um, 1,000 cubic feet of uh, air. So. Let's say, and we have two vents here, so let's say we do 500 you know, cubic feet per minute of, of flow in each of them. We want to convert this into a mass flow rate, so uh, the density of air is about 1 kilogram uh, per meter cubed. So uh, times 1 kilogram per meter cubed. And let's change it from a volumetric flow rate to a uh, mass flow rate, right? So we have, we, we want 0.23 cubic kilograms per second in each of the vents. So then we can go in and say, uh, inlet, we'll call this the supply one. That'll be this one here. And we'll go to mass flow rate, put in the expression that we defined. Okay. We'll supply two. And we could have combined it together and just doubled the mass flow rate, um, which would have worked just fine as well. But this is a clear way of showing things. And then we want returns. So we have two returns. We'll do this ones on the ceiling. So the returns will be outlets. And they'll have a relative static pressure of zero. Do an outlet here. Oh, I jumped the gun there here. Now it's uh, zero pressure. So that's pretty much it. Uh, sometimes we want to increase the number of iterations to solve. Uh, thousands is probably excessive for these simple models. Maybe 300 is enough. And that's it for the analysis. We're going to go back and set some other information. So um, one of the reasons we want to run a ventilation analysis 
is to look at the age of air. As we pump air in and out of this, of this classroom, how long does the air actually stay there? If we want uh, fresh air, we'd expect the classroom overall to have you know, air that hasn't been around for all that much. So if you look at an ACH of 6, we would want, theoretically, this air to be totally replaced every 10 minutes. However, that's probably that's unlikely given the shape of the room where the um, supply and return location are uh, return ducts are located. So let's let's put in a age of air calculation. To, to do that, the easiest way is to just create a, a variable called age of air, and this will be a a volumetric term, and uh, this will be a second. Unit. So we want to know how long the air, the air has been around. Then in uh, in our fluid model, we want to turn on the age of air, and we want to have it be transported around the room, just as you would with uh, any other variable. So now we we're, we have to specify for the supply what is the quantity. So it's going to come in at zero seconds. So when the flow first enters the room, it'll be, it'll be fresh air, which means it's been in the room for zero seconds. Then we put a subdomain in. Subdomain is a source term. Uh, and we're going to increment this. Um, by one. Right. Adding the source term of one means that every second the age of air, uh, there's one second of age getting added to the air inside the domain. So this is all we need to do. Let's go back to our simulation and uh, run this analysis. Okay, we're going to use five cores to run this model. Start run and off we go. Okay, the simulation is completed. Let's take a look at the results. So here is our model. This is a fairly detailed classroom model. We can look at the streamlines. So this is how the air gets. The air reaches the return from the supply. So we're gonna feed the supply air in and see where it goes. And so remember we have a return over here and a return over here and you can see um, there's a different amount of flow going from through each of the return. We can calculate how much uh, air is getting into each of the returns. So we can do um, calculate the mass flow in return one, right? 0 0.0235 and return to okay so pretty much a same amount equal amount of, of air going to each of the returns and <coughs> can create a a plane now let's do the xy plane at let's say one meter And we can color this using the variable age of air. And this shows us how long each, uh, how long the air has been in each of the locations. So we have some air. This is the global, uh, but let's go to local here. Okay, so the maximum air has been in that location for 300 seconds. So if we do 317, right? So it's about five minutes, which is pretty good. So it shows that in, in this case, we have pretty good circulation of air. The maximum amount of time the air has been in the space is about three minutes. Um, in certain areas, it's much less. We can create, um, and if we do global,
Right, it's about the same. So most of the air has been in the space for much less than the, the 10 minutes that we estimated. Uh, we can also create a ISO surface. So if we want to see how, how much of the, where is the divi dividing point between air that's been in the space for, let's say three minutes, uh, it's 280 seconds. Okay. Uh, we can turn off these other ones here. And we can do an animation here of uh, the ISO surface. You can see how uh, where the air is fresh versus stagnant. Now we can change this value here, so and slide it over here and see how the air circulates around the room. So that's a quick demonstration of a ventilation study. We can plot the age of air. We can cal calculate the mean age of air. So a simple calculator here. Um, we can do an area average on the plane for the age of air. Right, so it's 265 seconds on this surface. We can also do a volume average of the air, 256 seconds. So this tells you a quick way of calculating the, doing a simulation. Uh, the setup is pretty simple. This, this mesh is probably quite a bit more dense than, than it needed to be, but um, the results are the same. We're able to calculate the mean age of air inside this room at any location. And this will help to understand how different ventilation strategies can impact our system. For example, we can choose to open the, open the windows and see how that causes the uh, air circulation to change. We can add fans, blowers, uh, filters into the room to try to further reduce or improve the air circulation in the system. So that's it for a quick example of, uh, of this type of simulation. Um, thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel if you find this useful. Thank you and have a good day.